today. Today we finish up our series, We Believe. You know, this is a longer series, but it's walking through the, the Apostles' Creed. Things that are universal amongst all Christians. These are the foundations, the, the non-negotiables of the faith. And this is the last one of the, of the creed, and one that just like, yes, it's like a crescendo for the entire creed. Uh, you know, Christians over the last 2,000 years have said this. This is what we believe. So I, wanted, I thought it'd be important to <clears throat> start off with a quiz. You know, for some of us, we haven't been to school in a while, and it's okay. Uh, the, the words are on the, the screen so that you can't flunk this one. But these are the, the questions that we need to grab a hold of. So here's my, the first question that we have. Do you believe in God the Father? Well, give me your answer on this one. I believe. Well, wait a minute. It's just not my quiz. So I, this was the part that I, I, this is you. Like, say it out. That this is my foundation. This is my non-negotiables in life. So we talk about our God the Father. So here we go. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. But there's more. Here we go. On the third day, he arose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Here, leave that one up a second. Um, I want us to grab a hold of this because we are Christians who live between the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. That's where we are today in our lifetime. We live with the idea of we know our God the Father and we have sinned against Him. And just being who we are, we're corrupted deep down to our souls. But we know Jesus and how He came to remove the corruption from our souls and make us clean before our God. He has given us forgiveness of sins through Him. We exist as the body of Christ, the church. And we live between the forgiveness of sins and what will be someday life everlasting. And today what we're going to talk about is that time in between. What's going to happen between the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our body, and the life everlasting. So we need to talk about those things so we we get it into our heads. You can go on to the next slide, though. Because this is where it gets a little murky. What is the life everlasting? What, what does it mean to have your, your, your body resurrected? What does all this mean for us? And that's, that's where we get a little bit caught up in it. Through, throughout history, whenever a person ceased all life functions, that they died, they would have some sort of service for them. You know, the... the Oftentimes they would have people ringing a bell to say, hey, gather up because we are going to take this person, we're going to mourn with some people that we care about because we've lost a friend that we care about. And we're going to walk with them to put the body in the ground. And they would sometimes ring a bell just to say, all right, this is a person for whom the bell is told. Their time on earth is over. Now what? Because it, it, any pastor likes a funeral over po- as opposed to a, a wedding. Weddings are, are joyous times, but nobody listens to the pastor during a wedding. It, nobody does. 
unless they make some really silly mistake and gaffes is terrible, then they remember it. But other than that, they just want to hear the person say, I do. Okay, good. They're locked in. Great. For a funeral, people are listening. They often hear, and they, and they ask those important questions at those times. When the bell tolls for somebody, you're faced with your own mortality. You start asking questions like, where is this everlasting life that we talk about? What is it like? What happens to my body? Is this life everlasting a good thing, or is it a bad thing? And then we don't ring bells all the time anymore when someone dies, but, but these are questions stay with us, and we ask them. And there are times that we need to take to say, all right, this is what happens. This is the thing that happens when someone passes. Because, just to throw some news out there for you, we will all be that person someday. There, there might be some people that Jesus will come back before they pass, but we will all face that situation. So we're going to dig a little bit today because the Apostle Paul talked with people just like us who said, well, what is this stuff? What happens? What, what happens when, when I die? What happens when a loved one dies? And, and it's 1 Corinthians 15. He, he, he puts a whole chapter together, 58 verses specifically dealing with what happens when someone dies and the resurrection of Jesus first, but then also us. So let me, I'm going to read a little bit to us about what happens. What happens when we die? Before we get to life everlasting, what happens? And let me read to you. I'm going to start in verse 51. Paul says this, But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will be transformed. And, and I just got to stop you there a second. Every time there's a, something is repeated within the Bible, you have to pay attention to that. In, in this passage here that we're going to read today, five times Paul says the word transformed. So it, it's important to grab a hold of that. So if, you're, if you've got your Bible with and you're underlining or circling or however you do that, Circle that because it's important during this time. Transformed. We will not all die, but we will be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in a blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For the dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For the sin is the, the sting that results in death, and the law gives it, it sin its power. But thank God... He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Ah, isn't that fun stuff? Our, our Bible gives us hope. And Paul was giving people just like us hope. And, and I think it's important to talk about what happens when you die so that you have hope in the middle of this, whether it's a loved one or whether it's you that you look forward to this someday. And I have to bring this one up. Um, everybody dies. Just start on a downer here. I just, I, maybe I'm Captain Obvious today, but everybody dies. You know, and unless Jesus comes back soon, uh, we're all going to be that person. And Ecclesiastes 3 says, There's a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die. And this is part of life. You know, 
parts of, uh, there's a verse in Hebrews that talks about, hey, you get one shot at this. There's just not this never-ending cycle here. You get one shot at this. You get to be born, and you die. This is life. This, this is the obvious thing that we, we talk about. And, and let me give you one more obvious thing before we get in a little bit further. Your body's going to decompose. It, it will de- decompose. This is a way you were made out of the dust of the earth. All the elements inside your body are the, in dust. And, and there's crazy people that say, you know, when you look at dust in the air, that could be somebody's body just flecking around in there. It's like, whoa. It's kind of weird. But it's, we are made out of dust. That God breathed into people and gives life into them. But we're born, we live, and we die, and we decompose. We turn back into dust. And then these are just the obvious things. And, and hopefully you notice on, 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 on the sheet that you get in the program or, or on, the, on the screen, I put some verses in there in case you want to do more research. You, you want to look into it a little bit deeper. You're saying, hey, is Matt actually telling me the truth? Go look it up. This is what the Bible tells us. We live... We die, we decompose. But there's more. And this, and this I, I wanted to get those gone because we understand these. Here's what we also know. Paul was telling us that our bodies will be physically resurrected. That just Wait a minute, our body's going to decompose, but the, the, our bodies will be physically resurrected. When a person dies, when a person dies, Their body and their soul is ripped apart. Because we are body and soul. That's who we are. But when you die, it's taken apart. It's it's separated. And Paul is saying, wait a minute. When this is all said and done, we are going to be resurrected. As Jesus was resurrected bodily and his soul would put together again. We will be, have the same. And our, our physical bodies will become spiritual. And, and our mortal bodies that decompose will be immortal. It will never decompose. And, and this is us. This is the, the, the Apostles' Creed talks about this. And this is usually where we have a squirrel moment. We go, well, and, and we go off on this tangent. We start thinking about, man, what age do I get to be? Oh, I want to be in my 20s where I was strong and I could lift a house by myself. Or, oh, I was so beautiful in my 20s. And I want to be that person. And some of the ladies will say that too. But it's, it's you know, that's how we, we get the squirrel moment. And when we focus in on those things instead of what's really important. You know, I, I sense that God, he... he when we ask him these questions like, God, what is, what is heaven going to be like? What's my, my body going to look like when I get resurrected? And he looks at those and says, maybe that's the silliest question I have ever heard. You know, what are, what are you thinking about those types of things? I'm going to blow your mind as to what is really going to happen. You are going to be transformed. And you can't even think how awesome that's going to be. You know, it's 1 Corinthians 2 that says this. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has even imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. You know, think of the best thing that, that, that your body will be like, or heaven will be like, and then just like times it by a trillion. I'm not even sure we get to what it's really going to be like yet. You know, I, my idea of heaven is always a, going to have tons of soccer fields and we ever we get to play every day and we have fun teammates all the time and and when one team scores both teams say great job that was a great shot you know and, and that's just me because i love soccer and, and, and other people would say oh there's going to be lots of fishing there or however and that's their passion you know i get i get the idea that if, if i go before god and i ask him this question and, and I, I say, hey, where's the soccer fields up here, God? And he, he'll say, hmm, soccer, football, the round ball. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, I always liked a good soccer match. You know, there's a reason why we made it the number one sport in the world. But, um, you know, we don't think so small here. You know, even 
Here we say, oh, we've got a million times better than that. You know, don't get so small thinking. You know, you're going to be resurrected. And God has got something so much more cool than we would ever dream of. Don't get stuck on that. Stay with the fact that we will be resurrected and we will also have a judgment day. We need to be ready for that. You know, a few weeks ago we talked about Jesus would come back and He will judge the living and the dead. When we get resurrected, when we have our bodies and souls put back together again, we're going to have two trials here. And they're going to be on one of two things. It's going to be about who you knew and what you did. And then the first one is, is, is for everybody. We're going to be judged on whether we knew Jesus or not. Your friends are going to be judged on whether they knew Jesus or not. And if for some of us, we're going, oh my goodness, i got to go talk to my friend. Because they don't know Jesus. But in either way, it's, it's we need to be, we're going to be judged on whether we know Jesus or not. There's, there's going to be so many surprises in heaven. And, and, and this is going to be one of them. You're going you're gonna to see up there and you're going to say, hey, where's little Johnny? You know, I, for sure he should have been in heaven. I, I knew him as a kid. You know, he was always in Sunday school. And he was, he was like an elder at his church. You know, why isn't he up here? And, and we might ask some people, like, hey, where's, where is he? And they'd say, oh, um, um, he didn't know Jesus. Oh, he did all the things that you're supposed to do. He went to church. He, he did that catechism thing. He just never knew Jesus. Do you know Jesus? I, I, you don't want to get there and have God say, um, excuse me, I never knew you. You did all those things, I, but I never knew you. you we never talked. But this is going to be the other part. There's going to be so many surprises. You'll be up there and you'll say, how did that person get in there? Well, what are they doing in here? I am sure. <laughs> I am sure someone's going to look at me and say something like that. Hey, I knew him in high school. What is he doing up here? God, what, he knows Jesus? Oh, there's a shocker. You know, these are, I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person here that is going to have that said about them. Yeah, some of you guys should be sh shaking your head, yeah, that might be me too. There are going to be people that you'll say, ah, oh, God did a work in them that I did not know about. Oh, they, he changed them deep inside, and I never was close enough to see that. That God changed a dark soul like mine and He did it to them too. That's what the surprise is that we will see there. And on Judgment Day, God's going to look at every person and it's going to be, do you know my son Jesus? That's the bottom line there. The, the second part is, and it doesn't affect your, your eternal salvation, it's going to be, what did you do? with what you've been given. You know, we, we just saw pictures of people that were using the talents that God had given them. You know, God has given us all talents. And God's going to look at us and say, hey, what did you do with all these talents for me? What did, what did you do with them? You know, I, 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 I just poured them into you. Oh, tell me you weren't scared to use them for me. Tell me you didn't just hide them and put them off to the side. Tell me you, you took them and said, I am going to encourage people with them. I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to use them to build God's kingdom. Tell me you did that. You know, I, I, I don't want to have to give an excuse before God that day. and say, oh, You know what, God, I know that you, you gave me that talent. Um, yeah, I, I ran from it. I, I, I put that one to the side. I think that would, that would just, it just hurts me inside to have to come up with that excuse to my God. 
Oh, hey, you know, I've, I've made this, these leadership talents in you. I, I want you to be an elder or a deacon. Come on, you can do it. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, God, God don't make me do that. Hey, I've given you these talents. I want you to go tell your, your neighbor that God loves them, that you care about them enough to tell them that. Oh, no, come on, don't make me do that. No, we're going to stand before God and he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? And for some people, God is just going to say, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come enjoy your master's happiness. Now let's celebrate together. That's what I want for all of us. That God has blessed you. He's given you talents that we're using them to build up others and show God's love to every person. I, I've taken a lot of time with some of these, but let me go to the, this last one here. We're going to have an eternal home. We live between forgiveness of sins and life everlasting, this eternal home. And either we will be in God's presence, that there's, not, there's no barriers anymore between us and God. There's no pain and sickness and all that. We're, we're, we're in His presence fully. Or we will be separated from a loving God for eternity. And for some of us, man, don't tell me this stuff. You're bringing me down. This is terrible stuff. I, I, just, I just have to tell you, what Jesus talked about. Jesus talked about the, the parables out of, uh, out of Matthew chapter 25, the sheep and the goats. The, the, it, things are going to happen that is going to separate. And that's what's going to happen. But the biggest idea here is your eternal home is with Jesus. It's, it's not so important the dest where, where it's supposed to be. The, we're, we're, there's some people that say, oh, it's uh, on certain planets somewhere. It's up there. You know, it's like, you're a squirrel moment. The, the big idea is that it's with Jesus. That, that you are forever with Him. Wherever He is, is heaven. Wherever He is, is your eternal home. Let me, let me read Revelation chapter 21. And, and I want you to hear with our God. Well, let me read this to you. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 4, it describes like our eternal home. Someone's given a megaphone in heaven, and as he shouts this out. He's screaming this out for everybody to hear. He says, look, God's home is now among his people. It's among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them them he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain all these things are gone forever we will be with jesus wherever that is with him there's no separation anymore. We can see Him without all the pain and the sorrow and all the, the things that distract us here. We will be with Him, like face to face, enough, nothing between us. There's nothing to separate us from God's love. That's just, hopefully we grab a hold of that, that that's our eternity. Whatever, whatever we're going to do in heaven, whatever job, whatever... I don't know if I'm going to have a great voice. I'll get to sing in the choir. I don't know where, what is going to happen. The big idea is you are with Jesus forever. And that should just go, wow. I know I'm here. This is just a taste of what is there. We get a little taste of, of being with Jesus each day. We live here in this... Jesus, I, I, I need you today in whatever we're going to do. I, I'm with you. I'm right here with you. And, and tomorrow we say the same. God, I got some, I got some challenges today. Would, would you stay close to me? Let me feel your presence. Let me be aware of what you are. I'm with you. And every day we get a little taste of what heaven's going to be like. Just a taste. 
And someday it will be full. We got a little nibble, a little appetizer. Someday it's going to be the full meal. There'll be no more separation between us and God. Jonathan Edwards said this, Even after 10,000 centuries, we will not have shaved off one second of our time in heaven. Forever. My, pa- my pastor from Minnesota about 10 years ago, Archie, Pastor Archie, he was battling cancer. He was towards the end of his life. And, and, and I'm, I'm in Muskegon. I'm saying, oh, what can I do? I gave him a call. I said, hey, how are you doing? You know, it's, it's, not, it's not going so well. He had cancer was eating away at him. And, and this is the part that I, I remember so, so vividly from him. He, he says, says I, I don't have a death wish, but I'm looking forward to my eternal home. I, I, you know, I don't have a death wish like I, I want to die. Because I, I, I have friends here. And I have assignments that I need to do here. But I'm looking forward. And all the pain and the sorrow is gone. And I'm in heaven. Can that be us? We live in a time that we're between the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. And in the middle, we look forward to the life everlasting. And we don't have a death wish, but but God, I know that this is going to be awesome. I'm going to be with you forever. You know, at funerals we sing songs that talk about the life everlasting. How great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, Oh, what joy will fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art. You know, even Amazing Grace, the last verse, is like, Wah. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first began. This, this is a little taste now of what we will do. Be with Jesus forever. I hope that you have some peace today of these foundational, non-negotiables of our faith. That you have some peace that you know Jesus. And that future is a little taste now. You know, death has defeated your eternal address. Changed when you've met Jesus. It changed because it's no longer here. It's there. It's in heaven. It's with Jesus. Remember that earth is not your home anymore. May we live this week with the joy of life eternal. That that might sustain us to do the jobs that we have every day. Let me pray with you. Thank you.